All right, so today's lecture is going to be on cell division. Basically, what happens is one cell grows really, really big, makes an extra copy of its DNA, and splits into two identical cells. These cells are now called the daughter cells. Um, so we already went over asexual and sexual reproduction. You already know that in asexual reproduction, you basically make a clone of yourself. In sexual reproduction, you bring in some extra traits because you get one from mom and you get one from dad. For the most part, single-celled organisms are going to be the ones that reproduce through asexual reproduction. Though when we're talking about cell division in your body, especially when it comes to injuries or you growing, that's going to be similar to asexual reproduction. Did this. So, sexual reproduction. If you guys have siblings, you'll notice that you and your sibling are not identical. You are not twins. This is because you each get a certain gene from mom and a certain gene from dad. That means that in the gene pool now, you have variation. If mom has green eyes and dad has brown eyes, maybe you have blue eyes. It doesn't matter because they each have a trait that may not be dominant, and then you may be a carrier of that trait as well. This is the comparison for you guys. Uh, let's get this for now. Okay, so every cell is going to have a copy of your DNA. So the way that this works is, first of all, think of DNA in this, in this term kind of like a little string of yarn. If I'm holding yarn out in my hand for you to see from the other side of the classroom, you're not going to see it as much as if I was holding a ball of yarn, yeah? So what happens is you basically have DNA, I'm going to skip that for now, that wraps around with a histone protein and that creates this coil and that coil ends up being a chromatid and then when you have two together at the very center you'll have a centromere holding them together and that's how you get a chromosome in eukarya specifically. Now when you're talking about DNA in prokaryotes, it's a little different. If we go back to the one I just skipped, you'll notice that their DNA is kind of circular. This is because of the way that they reproduce. They don't need as much complicated DNA as we do. Let's pause that for a second. So again, you have the DNA strand. It coils around. You end up with two identical chromatids. And in the center, holding it all together, is the centromere. Now the main parts of the cell cycle, the cell needs to be able to grow, it needs to prepare for division, it needs to make DNA, and then it needs to form the daughter cells. In prokaryotes, they usually have regular patterns of growth. Basically it just gets really big, it doubles its DNA, and then it splits using binary fusion. This is the main difference. They go through binary fusion. I'm sorry, fission, not fusion. So you have the DNA, like I said, it's circular, then it doubles it, the cell gets ready to split, it gets really big, splits in two with binary fission. Um, our cycle is more complicated. Remember, everything about us is more complicated because we have to take into account all the weird complex organs that we have in our system. So the basics of the cell cycle is the G1S phase and G2 phase are going to be called inner phase. Mitosis is going to be the main focus of what we're going over today, but later on. And then you have cytokinesis, where basically the cell actually splits. So in G1 phase, you have the growth. In S phase, you have the DNA replication. And in G2, you're getting ready for mitosis. Skip that. Make sure you're looking very carefully at the cell structures, because they can get a little confusing especially centromere and centrioles. They are completely different, and what they do is completely different. So you have the chromatid, which we already talked about together. They are the chromosome. When you have the two chromatids, the centromere is going to join them together. The centrioles, we kind of glossed over when we went over the animal cells. It helps the spindles form, and the spindles you're going to see are basically going to help separate the chromatids. So you have prophase. When we're going over mitosis specifically, you're going to think PMAT, P-M-A-T. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So prophase, we're just getting ready. Everything's starting to form. The nuclear envelope starts to crack. Think of like an egg being cracked. 
So the chromosomes are just going to be kind of floating around, so they're easier to move around. And by this point, your DNA is already condensed, so you actually have the chromosomes visible. Okay, so we did that. All right, metaphase. M, metaphase, M, middle. That's the main thing that you guys should look out for, M for middle. So what happens is the chromosomes align right in the center of the actual cell. The spindles will start to attach to the center. And then you go through anaphase. Think A for away. Same as when we talked about arteries, A is for away. You're going to basically rip the chromosome in half and grab the chromatids and pull them to different poles. And that's when we go through telophase. Telophase, basically you're already forming the nuclear envelopes and you're just getting really prepared for that cell division. Then cytokinesis happens. Remember, it is not technically part of mitosis. It is a different thing. It's a separate step. So in animal cells, basically you get like a little pinch in the middle. So it kind of looks like a peanut. In plants, it's different because it, call, it forms what's called a cell plate. So right down the middle, there's like a little border wall. And then here are the stages, just so you guys can see them. Before we get into that, though, let me just show you something else so it's easier for you guys to see it. All right, so just in case PMAT didn't stick, we have a way for you guys to learn it. It's a little hand gesture, and you have a video of it, so now there's no way you can't learn it. So Jan has demonstrated it for us so that I could add it to this video. So interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. And you guys can go back if you still didn't get it. So again, before we move on from the cell cycle, you have G1 phase, the S phase, when the DNA gets replicated, the G2 phase when we're getting ready for division, and then mitosis. All right, so cell division. The main part about cell division is it can't just go crazy and divide as many times as it wants. You need to be able to control it. So there are these things called regulator proteins or regulatory proteins that happen both inside and outside the cell. So you can turn the control of these proteins or sorry you can turn the control of cell division on and off it depends on what your body actually needs now if you have a break or if you have punctured in, punctures in your skin obviously you're going to want to turn it on and the cyclins are going to help you do that they help regulate the timing of the cell cycle especially in eukaryotic cells so like i said you have the regulatory proteins you have internal regula regulators external regulators and growth factors. So the internal is exactly that, it's inside the cell. External are the ones outside the cell and the growth factor is mostly for embryonic development and like wound healing like we mentioned before. Apoptosis, so basically what happens if, it, is it, if a cell is too damaged, they program their own deaths. They're like, okay, well, I can't get better, maybe I should just die. And then that's basically what happens. So cancer specifically, I know a lot of you guys had questions about that when we were going over the heart for whatever reason. So cancer cells just basically are cells that are growing out of control. They don't respond to any signals from the regulators. They just keep going and going. Um, not all cancer is life-threatening, though. If you get a giant mass, you have a tumor, but the tumor itself can be benign or malignant. So if the tumor is just kind of chilling there, then it's a benign tumor. Now, if, the, if it's basically spreading and killing off good tissue, then you have a malignant tumor, and that's a little more serious. So we already went over the whole drug thing. Cancer can basically be any defect in the genes that help regulate cell growth, and that can come from any kind of drug, radiation, defective genes. Um, you can have a defective P53 gene, which is very common in cancer cells. You can actually test for this, but you shouldn't unless cancer is like a significant factor in your history. Um, for treatments of cancer, you have 
there's a lot more alternatives now. But the basic ones are targeted radiation. So basically what happens is they find the spot that has the tumor or any cancer cells, and then they radiate that area by itself. If not, you have chemotherapy. And for most cases, you can just remove the tissue, which is why many people with breast cancer just get their breasts removed. And that should be it, guys.